Sepultura had a huge shift in sound uh, after Max left, and you guys went from two guitarists down to one. What was yeah. the... Um, how did this affect how you wrote music? Um, you know, usually me and Max, we started everything. You know, uh, since I joined the band, like exchanging riffs and playing together, because we used to practice a lot, especially me, Max, and Igor. You know, we wrote Beneath the Remains like in, almost as a trip because Paulo was not really around during those days on the rehearsals. And we spent every day there going and rehearsing. So it was two guitars and a drummer that we were, you know, developing ideas and recording and et cetera, you know. Of course, that changed. And um, I, I got more connected to Igor, you know, musically when Max left. And then Derek came in really for lyric and ideas of vocals and stuff. So it divided in two, you know, two different guys. And then Gian came in and Eloy and, and Paulo was more participative, you know, participating a little more on, on, uh, on everything, you know. He's not actually a writer, but he was always there with his bass and putting uh, his, his input as well, you know, somehow. So uh, everything changed. I mean, it has to change. You know, when I joined the band, I changed the band a lot. You know, the band was Sepultura before was a death metal band, very different from Schizophrenia and, and on. And then when Derek joined the band, it changed the band drastically, like I did. And then with Jean de Labella, the same when Igor left and Eloy now, you know. I mean, uh, it's very natural. We have somebody new there with new elements, new characteristics. Might as well use it instead of to just trying to copy something that is not there anymore, you know. So uh, I think the change is something in inevitable and, and something that we welcome because uh, every day is a different day, you know, and, and we work with the tools we have. I mean, the pandemic situation is an example. It's something totally unwanted. And we have to reinvent Sepultura, to keep Sepultura as a band working without touring, without the stage, which was our biggest challenge in our career. And we, we got it. You know, we did it. Sepulquarta kept us together and we have an album out of it. You know, it was great. Take a second to, to, to talk about how amazing Derek Green is. Because I swear to God, he doesn't get, I don't believe he gets enough credit. I was so happy to, my first ever Sepultura concert was actually Eaton's Hill uh, in Brisbane in 2018. Uh, right. So it was a bit of a latecomer for you guys. Um, but he, uh, I love the fact that someone actually put up a banner, uh, 20 years of Derek Green, which I believe you helped put on, put on the, the <laughs> drum roller. Because it, it annoys me. I, I kind of refuse to look at the comment section on anything Sepultura related. Because uh, you know what it's uh, like. That's going to be eternal. <laughs> yeah, it's like, shut up. He's it, 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 is a part, it is a part of what we are, man. I mean, this kind of gossip and stuff, it's, it is what it is. You know, it's like, a, it's not a part of what we are, of course. But the fans are the fans, you know. They, I remember with my friends when I was young, you know, discussing which was better, Aussie or ACDC. You know, I was Aussie advocate and my friend was the ACDC and you know, it was hours of discussion and stuff. It was great, you know. Mm. Of course, we fight a little bit, but uh, we had a great time listening to the music. And, and there was a great research going and, and creating arguments for Aussie or either ACDC, you know, looking for the best, whatever, solo or, or production or cover, or whatever, you know. Everything was something that we could use, you know, to defend our thesis. <laughs> and the fans <laughs> today are just the same. It's just different because everybody has a voice now because of Twitter and Facebook and stuff, you know, and it's crazy. Everybody thinks they know everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Barney from Napalm Death was the same. Yeah, you know, we had a good discussion because obviously they've been continuously evolving, but you've got this core fan base that it's like, no, it doesn't sound like yeah. scum from 1987. So everything course, they've done yeah. after. <laughs> yeah. And Napalm Death is great. That's a great example, man. You know, how... how you know, fantastic this band are uh, of, of resilience, you know, they're still there making what they believe, you know, and very powerful. It's fantastic. Mm. And they, their last album, you know, they're still known as a grind band. Two of the three singles they put out weren't even grindcore. They were, you know, yeah, really yeah. experimental rock. I'm like, I love them. Um, look, speaking of uh, musical, um, you know, musical branching out and trying new things, mate, you're, uh, the album before the last one, Machine Messiah, I personally think, just my own opinion, is the best thing Sepultura has put its name to, I believe, since the mid-90s. Thank you. 
Um, Thank you. I, and every time I'd hear someone go, oh, they're not the same since Max. I'm like, no, shut up <laughs> and look at Machine Messiah and listen to like a track like Iceberg Dances and try to tell me that's not a band at the absolute peak of their fucking game. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's great. How I mean, yeah, but uh, it, it is an evolution, you know, like, like you said, with the Eloy Casagrande. You know, he came into the band and he brought his possibilities. He came to the band, we did the mediator between Head and Heads, Must Be the Heart, our first album with Ross Robinson, producer. Was was a great experience, was a good beginning of this new lineup. And then Machine Messiah, you know, which was really an album that... Uh, I don't know. It's a special album for sure. We achieved something that um, inspired us to do Quadra, you know, to the next one. I mean, Quadra is a, is a develop of what we started on Machine Messiah. Like you said, Iceberg Dances, you know, the instrumental stuff and the song that opens the album, more melodic and, you know, slow pace and, and Phantom Self and etc. you know. So uh, it, 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 it is cool that uh, with this new... Uh, I mean, new guys in the band, new, new ideas, new possibilities. I mean, we have the best drummer in the world. I mean, Eloy Casagrande is an amazing drummer. So I can really explore and try to write more difficult stuff for myself, you know, really to try to challenge myself as a guitar player, as a composer to do something more interesting, you know. And uh, I think this lineup is really special, man. I mean, we are in an amazing momentum, you know, and, and very anxious to go back to the road, of course. You know, we... We, we need to play those songs. We never, you know, we never did so far, you know, because mm. of the pandemic situation. We, we didn't have the chance to play the songs of the new album, but uh, soon, I hope. <laughs> Mate, I, I, was, I fell over myself with the opportunity to interview you because you guys have a, that uh, gig that you played at Brisbane uh, had a very special place in my heart. And that is because... I went into uh, rehab for alcohol addiction at the start of 2018 and I just left and Sepultura is the first ever show I went to sober. That's great, man. And awesome. I was terrified, man. I was like, oh, I can't enjoy music without booze. I'm, I'm, I'm going to yeah, hate it. Yeah. And I, I honestly, if you guys hadn't come out and killed it and I hadn't had an amazing time, I probably might not have held on to sobriety as long as I have. I'm over three years sober wow. now. And That's then, interesting, uh, man. And then to find out that you yourself uh, yeah. have, um, have walked away from it as well. How do you feel? I feel great. It's, a, it's been a year and a half. You know, it's, a, it's amazing. It was a, once it was very clear in my mind that I had to stop, it was very easy to stop. <laughs> you know, uh, for me, I, I, I didn't have that habit of drinking every day you know mm -hmm. of course on tour you, you get a little you know uh, too much and every day because you, you have a different routine but um I, I realized that alcohol was making the choices for me you know which place i would go what what place uh, what kind of vacation i would do or, mm -hmm. you know I'm, I'm, i don't want to go to disney because they don't have beer you know yeah. that, that stuff it doesn't matter if you are with your family, with your kids and stuff. Alcohol was more important, you know. And once I realized that, I, I, it was very easy for me that I have to stop this, you know. Why am I I'm a slave of this fucking thing, you know. I, I like to drink. I like to have a beer. I like to have wine and stuff. But, you know, for me, it was enough. I, I enjoyed that a lot. <laughs> you know, I'm 52 years old. I toured the world. I, I drank all over the place and it was a nice journey and all. But... Uh, from now on, you know, it's not helping and it's not making any good for me, you know, and I, I stop and I feel great. You know, I don't, I don't feel the, the urge or the wish to drink anymore. I, I can be around people drinking, my family drinks and the barbecues and stuff. And backstage, I, I did some shows here in Brazil with my son and, and etc. I'm fine. You know, I'm not running away from anything. I'm just decided I'm not a part of that anymore. You know, it's not like a, a promise I make to a saint or anything like that, you know, or mm -hmm. for my wife or for my kid, for that matter. You know, it was just a, a very personal choice because it is, you know, it's all up to you. I mean, it, 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 if you don't realize that you're never going to change, you know, so mm -hmm. uh, it was really a nice conversation I had with myself and, and I heard myself. <laughs> so yeah. that was good. 
it's a, it's kind of bizarre because it, it's it's a great thing because you can remember gigs. I remember every single second of that amazing show. No doubt about and, it. No um, doubt about it. You know, hearing tracks like "Against," which I never in a thousand years thought I'd ever hear live, and all this, all this great stuff. But the bizarre thing is, the reason I bring this up as well, is because I actually saw Max and Igor play Roots in the very same venue less than maybe six months before. So I'd literally yeah. heard two incarnations of the classic <laughs> Superhero lineup on the same stage within six That's months. That's cool, yeah. Night. And don't tell Max, but you guys were heaps better. <laughs> <laughs> we know that. <laughs> right? The weird part is, though, that was the last gig I ever went to when I was a drinker. And I had to get so off my face to get comfortable that I barely remember it. And I wasn't, you know, whereas yeah, with you guys, yeah, I was... Of course, yeah. I, I mean, of course, being on the road, being a famous band, it's much uh, easier to get lost. You know, everything's so easy. Everything's for free. Everyone wants to pay you a drink or, you know, everything. They want to please you, whatever, you know, girls, alcohol, drugs, and, and you know, easy access to anything you want. And if you believe too much on the myth and you feel drunk all the time, you know, it's very dangerous, of course, you know. And... Um, but I'm glad, you know, I went through what I did and the, the career I have and stuff, which is, I have to deal with that, you know, face that. Otherwise, I'll be running away. Oh, don't drink near me because I cannot see that. It's, it's not a ghost, you know. Mm. I know it's there, but it's not part of what I do anymore. It's, a, it's so nice, isn't it, not to have to be sprinting in the other direction. You know, I go. I still go to the the you know the liquor store and buy my wife. I don't care. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it, it's yeah. it's nice to that's, be. That's a, that's a nice uh, relief, I guess, feeling or you know something like that that you can breathe <laughs> and yeah. deal with that with no heavy. You know, it felt really like a, a dark cloud, you know, leaving or going away. You know, it's a very poetic way of saying, but. Uh, it felt like something like that, you know, like a, a heavy weight that uh, sometime, you know, some, mm. somehow or left, you know, kind of, uh, I don't have that burden anymore or something, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was this during lockdown or was this before? No, it was a little before. It was like two or three weeks before. We were rehearsing and practicing for the shows and for the tour. But was the, was this event, you know, that uh, a family gathering that was, I was just an idiot abusing alcohol and really one of those nights, you know, that uh, if if you if I continue with that, all the things will get worse, you know. Imagine and with the pandemic situation, even that wasn't mm. there, you know. I mean, and alcohol, of course, for you know very well, with somebody who drinks, it's like a door and a gateway anytime. Oh, I need to drink. I'm too happy. I need to drink. I'm yeah. too sad. I need to drink. <laughs> I'm too tired. I need to drink. Oh, I just uh, came from the dream, the, the gym. I need to drink. A football yeah. game. I need to drink. <laughs> and anything, you know. So <laughs> it's like uh, a pandemic will be uh, worse. Than I'm, and I've seen, uh, you know, people saying that, of course, like abuse of alcohol and violence, domestic violence and all that stuff. You know, so... I guess was uh, was the right choice. I guess no, it was definitely the right choice. But I guess it was the right timing, you know, really to to make that choice. 